Okay, just a, a brief introduction. Uh, my name is Lewis Simpson. I'm a senior solutions architect uh, with NVIDIA. Uh, overall, with NVIDIA and Cumulus, I've been uh, with the two combined companies for about six years now. I did start out at uh, Cumulus Networks uh, back in 2017, so I've been uh, been there for a while. Um, let me advance my slides. So, yes, Henry just showed this. Uh, at that link below, so that was the link that Henry was looking at, um, and it details the switches or the switch series uh, and gives you the links to click on uh, to go to the NVIDIA pages uh, for those different series of switches. And what I'll do on the next slide uh, is go down into the details on the switching environment, uh, the switches themselves and what the different series are and what that means to you. Um, and note that Cumulus Linux version 5.1 or later is required. I'll go into details on that as well. So you'll see the series of the switches on the bottom of the page, uh, SN2000, SN3000, SN4000, and what was not included on the uh, Previous page was the SN5000, uh, and I'll get into that a little bit. But right now we have the 2000, the 3000, and the 4000 series uh, certified and ready to go for Azure Stack HCI. Um, these are the switches themselves with the speeds and feeds uh, that each one of them does. Um, the, the SN2000 series is based off the original Spectrum ASIC. Um, from 16 to 64 ports, uh, one to 100 gig. Uh, the two notable ones in the upper left-hand corner are the SN2100 and the 2010. Uh, those are half width, one U switches. So you can get two of those switches uh, in one U and a network rack. So they make a, uh, they make a rack mount uh, for those switches uh, that allows you to have a uh, fully redundant switching top of rack platform in one uh, rack unit at the top of the rack uh, with those speeds and feeds. Um, the SN3000 is based off of the Spectrum 2 ASIC, uh, 1 to 200 gigs, 16 to 128 ports, uh, the 3420 and the 4410 in that series, and then the Spectrum 3 ASIC, uh, from 1 to 400 gig, 32 to 128 ports. Uh, you'll see in green um, any of the switches that have a little nomenclature out to the right in green. These are typically road mapped. Uh, the 2201 on the left is basically your out-of-band management switch. We have uh, released that, and that switch is GA. Um, the 5600 and 5700 are uh Spectrum or ASICs, those will be uh, on into either uh, before the end of this year or into uh, 23. Um, and those will be looking to get certified on the platform as well. Uh, and then the 40, the 4000 series and the 3700 series, you'll see the speeds and feeds up there as well. So uh, we will be looking to uh, to add the SN5000 series as that hardware becomes available and we're able to get it into the labs and get them tested and certified. Uh, but those switches uh, in the Spectrum 4 ASICs uh, will all run Cumulus Linux. All the switches on uh, this page uh, run Cumulus Linux and we're currently on version 5.3. Um, so the requirements that were on that web page that Henry was showing you earlier um, are this. So uh, you can go there and get into the details. Um, the only one that we had to do recent work on was the 802.1ab, and that's what Henry uh, kind of focused on there a minute ago, was the LLDP uh, uh, TLVs and the custom TLVs for the 22H2. Um, version of the networking requirements. Uh, everything else uh, on this page, except for those we had, uh, and that's uh, the, the most recent development that we've done. Um, you can see, if you look at the, uh, the, 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 like the 21 or the uh, 20, early 22 requirements, there was only a couple of, uh, of those custom TLVs. 
Uh, and then the 22H2, there they added several more to those. So uh, we went and did the development for that. But those are those are their primary requirements. Uh, we've had these in cumulophonics for a while, except for the 802.1 AB things. And uh, of course, these are in versions 5.1 and greater. So a little bit about Cumulus Linux for those that, that don't know much about it. Um, you may be running Onyx, uh, which was uh, Mellanox's standards-based operating system uh, that they provided prior to the acquisition. Uh, they did support Cumulus Linux uh, with their ONI platform, and you were able to load Cumulus on Mellanox, which is uh, going back about seven years now. Um, but uh, moving forward with the acquisition, uh, we are leading with Cumulus Linux. Uh, Onyx will probably take more of a sustaining uh, kind of uh, mode within the company, bug fixes and things like that, but uh, no new features from that standpoint. All current feature developments going into uh, NVIDIA Cumulus Linux. So uh, Cumulus Linux is based on Debian 10 Linux. It's a full distribution. Uh, it's just Linux is, is what we like to say. Uh, honestly, it looks like a full-blown version of Debian Linux that's running on top of a switch. Uh, and instead of having NIC cards that appear as interfaces, you have switch ports that appear as interfaces that are fully ASIC-driven, uh, and all of the packet processing uh, in the data plane uh, is done in hardware by the ASICs and packet processors on the hardware. Uh, I mentioned that, that the current version is 5.3. Uh, we have, if you're using any versions of Cumulus Linux prior to 5.3 uh, in the 5.x line, um, 5.3 has significant improvements in the command line uh, for QoS and for Rocky uh, deployment. For, so for RDMA over converged Ethernet, uh, basically for storage networks, significant improvements uh, in 5.3 from that standpoint. Uh, from a command line, uh, uh, from the InView, the NVIDIA user experience. Um, Cumulus Linux is object model, API, and CLI driven. Uh, so we have a, a CLI that we do call InView. Um, the CLI is a client of the API, uh, and everything uh, flows down into a, an object model, uh, which the object model gives you full configuration for the switch. Uh, in the 5.4 uh, timeframe uh, and 5.5, uh, you'll start seeing the Python API and some open config uh, features that are going to be uh, developed there as well. Uh, because we're just Linux, obviously we work with, we work with Ansible, Puppet, Chef, Salt, uh, everything that you would expect from a Linux-based operating system. If you have an existing tool set that you're using to manage Linux servers, uh, you can uh, utilize that tool set to manage uh, elements of Cumulus Linux. Um, broad support for virtualization, uh, BGP, EVPN, VXLAN, uh, uh, several different models of uh, integrated uh, routing and bridging for VXLAN. Um, and we are in production at Microsoft for the Azure Stack Hub. Uh, one thing to mention in particular, uh, if you want to try Cumulus Linux uh, and you don't, uh, you know, want to uh, take up rack space and bring in switches and resources to do it, you can try it in our virtual environment on air.nvidia.com. Uh, it does require a login, uh, but once you have created your login, uh, you have free access to both create your own topologies as well as use topologies and production-ready automation that we have developed. Um, so that's out there if you want to kick the tires. Um, I would say it's probably about 97% of what you're going to see of Cumulus Linux on hardware. Uh, there are some ASIC features that we don't implement in the Air platform, uh, but uh, if you want to kick the tires on Cumulus Linux, that's the best way uh, to do it. Uh, no resources involved other than logging in and using your computer to do it. Uh, a little bit about the architecture of Cumulus Linux. Um, the one thing that we do is we use the Linux kernel uh, for the networking source of truth. Um, so everything flows through the kernel. The kernel is the networking model. Uh, you know, we do everything that we need to do on the bottom to light the lights, spin the fans, manage the resources of the switch, uh, you know, everything that we need to do from that standpoint. Um, 
the the control plane is uh, implemented in user space. So things like FRR, uh, IP route uh, two, uh, different uh, things in user space that that we use uh, to program the kernel. Uh, and then there is a process called switch D that will program the switch silicon, uh, the ASICs uh, through the uh, through the SDKs. Uh, that provide the programming, and and it works the other way as well. If we will, if we learn things through the front panel ports, uh, that comes in through Switch D. Switch D will program the kernel, and that will flow back up through user space uh, in order to be reflected in things like your routing tables, your bridge tables, uh, uh, and everything like that. So, uh, just a little bit on the architecture, and again. Um, you know, very simple update here with uh, our support for Azure Stack HCI. Uh, there's a lot of resources online that if you'd like to take advantage of them, um, please feel free to do so. And if you have any questions um, or want to contact me, I am Lewis. It's just L-O-U-I-S at NVIDIA.com.